America since 1967 there has been a Super Bowl on Sunday in America since 1985 there was a WrestleMania because girls are fun and have fun and Cindy Lauper was there in the Super Bowl Vince Lombardi won the trophy and then the trophy became the Vince Lombardi trophy and in 2012 Eli Manning won the Vince Lombardi trophy with New York Giants and he beat the New England Patriots and Tom Brady, even if Greg, Peter, and Bobby were not on the team, he still lost. And now on the Ultimate American Warrior in 2012. And bring you news. It's newer news than what Theodore Roosevelt said. Speak softly and carry a big stick. It's newer news than when Franklin Delano Roosevelt said a chicken in every pot and a car in every garage. It is newer news than when John F. Kennedy got shot and his head went back and to the left. Back and to the left! Back and to the left! It's newer news than when President Bush heard that the attacks on the Twin Towers happened on 9 11 and he did it. It's newer news than Bill Clinton! Did not have sexual relations with that woman. And that new news is that in 2012, the real American wrestling critics have begun. Hello, America. It is I, Dan America. And with me, as always, is Bob the 86er. Woo! That's right, America. It is Super Bowl Sunday, and once again, I have been drinking. Not just because the New York Giants have won their fourth. Is it fourth? Number four, baby. Number four Super Bowl championship. But I've been drinking. I watched the Super Bowl, and I drank. But you may notice something. See, I'm wearing a opposite jersey that you may have now seen on this Super Bowl Sunday. But next season, yeah, that's right. Well, since it is Super Bowl Sunday, America, I salute you. I wasn't very gracious, but to the Giants. To the Giants. Okay, now America, what do you say we get back to wrestling and get right back down to it? And now it's time for the face! My face for the week are the moves. Moves which are the essential to any match, obviously but you wouldn't so much notice if you watched Raw or Impact. I'm not talking about fancy moves. I'm talking about something as simple as a body slam, a headbutt, a suplex, a spine buster, a turnbuckle head smash. Where are these damn moves? I don't see them. All I see are some punches, some kicks, some fancy suplexes that aren't even really suplexes. Submission moves that you'd see in some MMA fight, but not really any so much wrestling moves, but this is my face. So I am going to talk about the wrestlers in which I see some good wrestling moves from. 
I see some good wrestling moves from Cody Rhodes, of course. I see some good wrestling moves from Wade Barrett, CM Punk, Dolph Ziggler. Whenever he gets the chance to show up, Triple H pulls off a pretty good move or two. Kevin Nash, not so much. You can only throw so many elbows to the face while your opponent is in the corner. Sankara, Unico, Primo and Epico, The Usos, good wrestlers, great wrestling moves. I like seeing it. I like seeing wrestlers in the ring pulling off wrestling moves like it was the days of the AWA, the WCCW, and the NWA. But that's my problem, America. I'm tired of hearing about how wrestling was wrestling back then and wrestling isn't wrestling now. That's why I'm all about people like Cody Rhodes, Randy Orton, Wade Barrett, and Dolph Ziggler, and CM Punk. Because they're wrestlers, America. TNA has some too. Bobby Roode, good job. Sting, stay out of it. Bischoff, son, stay out of it. You got some people that are up and coming there, like that. Who's that dude with the weird hair that I don't kind of like? No, no, there's a couple of them with weird hair. This is like the blonde and the brunette thing going on at the same time. Remember, we watched this match with the guy with the colorful pants, and we were like, yeah! The X Division dude. TNA, you really need to stand out more. But my face for the week is moves, America. That doesn't have really anything to do with the Raw or SmackDown results, but it's important. Because I like wrestling moves and my wrestling matches. And those wrestlers that have wrestling moves and their wrestling matches, I love it. Wrestlers that don't, don't love it. That's why I don't like Cena or Ryder. That's why I'll actually watch a match if freaking, uh, I can't believe I'm forgetting his name right now. Jack Swagger. <laughs> he is forgettable. Forgot your name, dude. Sorry. Woo -woo. Well, yeah, you're damn pretty near close to it. I mean, how long was your title run? Drew McIntyre, Wrestling Moves. Who are some other wrestlers with wrestling moves? Well, if I can lead into my face, I can name a great one. Alright. When you talk about wrestling moves, I think about THE wrestler, the man, the one who came back and saved Raw. No, Y2J didn't save Raw. No, he did not. The Undertaker saved Raw. And yes, he, he did. Yet another SmackDown guy. No one knew he was coming back. He took a year off. He looks like he's ready to go. Triple H soiled himself, patted Undertaker on the shoulder, tried to cover up the smell probably, and ran away. Tail between his corporate legs. Undertaker's back, America. Dark times are coming. And that is our face. The <laughs> Our heel for the week, as usual, mine is Raw, because it took them a half an hour to put on a wrestling match. And then the wrestling match lasted, what, like five minutes before more talking. And then there was another wrestling match, more talking. And then there was, what, what Brodus Clay comes out. I don't care who lost the bet, who is taking a bet. It sucks. The only good thing about it are the two chicks that put their butts together when they get into the ring. Yeah, I like that. Everything else about it, it sucks. Other than that, Raw displayed nothing but an attempt at being a wrestling show with the CM Punk match, and then it was saved by The Undertaker in the very end. Other than that, Raw, I could have watched reruns of King of the Hill, and believe me, I watch them a lot. And if you don't like King of the Hill, what would you rather watch, King of the Hill or Raw? I mean, you just gotta wait till The Undertaker showed up at the very end. 
and that's the only thing important that happened on Raw this week. TNA had more important things to say than Raw did. SmackDown freaking blew Raw right... No, Raw doesn't even belong in the same body of water in which SmackDown occupies. And that's what's wrong with Raw. It's because you watch Raw and you watch SmackDown, it's like you're watching two completely different companies, and one is an honest-to-God wrestling show, and the other is what my wife would watch, and she likes Grey's Anatomy. Is that your targeted audience, Raw? People who watch Grey's Anatomy? Hey, Jericho, CM Punk, guess what? You have the same appeal as Patrick Dempsey. How do you feel? How do you feel about that? Do you feel like McSteamy and McDreamy? Do you feel like Loverboy? I hope so, because that's what you are. And that's my heel. What's your heel, Bob? Raw. I'm going to agree with you 100%. Undertaker saved Raw. Uh, Brodus Clay. I've been <laughs> saying it. And I think I need to show whoever's in charge just what to do with you, Brodus Clay. I've been calling you a Pokemon. Well, here is your Pokeball. Get in it. Go away. That's kind of like Eli. Aha! And I also agree with you. Raw, SmackDown. Raw, New England Patriots. SmackDown, Super Bowl champion New York Giants. I don't need to say any more. Raw, if you want to become SmackDown, you got to step it up. We've been saying this since the very beginning. Undertaker can only save you for so long. Like I said, a flash in a pan does not make a fire. The fact that you needed Undertaker, who perennially is a SmackDown guy, comes in to save Raw again. Raw shouldn't need SmackDown to save it. Raw is supposed to be the flagship show, heading for a thousand episodes. Well, you're not going to have anyone catch the 1,000th episode special if no one's watching because they're going to be too busy paying attention to SmackDown and, yes, even TNA. <coughs> Raw. Get it going. And get in your Pokeball, Brodus Clay. And that's Bob's heel. Now it's time for Sell It. So, America, we've been doing this for the past two shows. Q&A! Okay. We here at the Real American Wrestling Critics have decided to induct our own into our own Hall of Fame. Which we will be presenting in a separate episode in which the Real American Wrestling Critics are. So tune in to our Hall of Fame induction ceremony, which you will see if you watch it. Now it's time for our signatures. My signature every week, as it will be every week until it is done. And I'm not just quoting John Malkovich here. I am serious. There has to be a Cena walkout. Raw is in Oklahoma City this week. Oklahoma City. Home of Jim Ross, J.R. Is that all you want to be famous for, is barbecue sauce? Or do you want to go down in history as the only WWE audience to represent the people by walking out on the man we hate the most, John Cena? Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hey, I paid for my ticket. I want to see the show. Well, here's the what's going to counter that. When you walk out on Cena, all you have to do is start heading out and announce why you're walking out, which is Cena walk out, Cena walk out. Then go out in the little hallway or whatever, get yourself from some concessions. Use the restrooms, buy some merchandise, no John Cena stuff. But that's all you have to do to go down in history. Now, Oklahoma City, 
Are you going to do it? Is the next town, Raw's then going to do it? Or the next town after that? Or are you going to leave it up to Albany, New York? Show the Giants thing, Bob. Does New York have to do everything? Well, next season, maybe not, but do they? And that's my signature, as it is every week to America, walk out on Cena. Because if they think that you just hate him, then they're going to think that you love to hate him. If you walk out on him, then you'll let them know that he's going to cost them money. Your signature? My signature for this week is going to be championships. Mm -hmm. I know I've discussed championships before, but uh, I really think I need to emphasize more of what I was talking about. Uh, John Cena, as unfortunately we know, is a 10-time WWE champion. I will not drink to that. No. Randy Orton is a 9-time champion. Undertaker? 7-time champion. If no one sees a problem with this, then you need to be in the snuggle room next to the rest of the Cena and Zack Ryder fans. <laughs> There's a reason why Cody Rhodes is getting a great following. And it's not just because he's a Rhodes or he's a great wrestler. It's because he took another one of their titles that it seemed like it was changing hands every three, four days. And he made it important. To me, right now, the biggest wrestling title is the Intercontinental Championship. Now, coincidentally, uh, I heard that they're thinking of uh, giving the light heavyweight championship a run on WWE Network. And I heard this from, shout out to FTW Podcast. Uh, I, they mentioned this in Twitter, and I tweeted back at them. Because they asked if it would be, good, be a good idea, and I said, uh, it would be a good idea, however, I'm afraid that then the light heavyweight championship would gain more value than the WWE championship. And here's where I leave it to you to take it off. Well, if you think about it, that would be great. Look at the great cruiserweights they have in there. Think about it. Dolph Ziggler could probably wrestle with that belt. Not that we want him to, but most of your... Great guys, with few exceptions, are cruiserweights now. So it's very well that that belt, or pretty much any belt, could become better than the two main titles they have. i like to see Jack Swagger have a good, successful U.S. title run. I think that belt needs to get some more prestige back to it. I mean, you had some great U.S. champions from back in the day of WCW. Uh, I think part of the problem is, is that there's just the two main champions, and... We don't need two main champions. We need one champion. Uh, Daniel Bryan, I uh, he think he's a great wrestler, but he's just not cutting it for me. And CM Punk's a great champion, but I feel like his title runs being like squandered because of the fact that he's on Raw, and we're I'm a SmackDown guy. I'm also a Paul Heyman guy. But, you know, it's like, one, two titles takes away from both of them. You, you need, we need to have one title and let someone have a year-long title run. You know, have them defend it on Raw, have them defend it on SmackDown, and have them defend it at pay-per-views. I think the prestige of these titles have been lost. Uh, Divas Championship, Beth Phoenix has done an amazing job. However, I think it needs to be the Women's Championship yeah. once again. And if you're going to give it to now, then just tell you, no more of the... No more of that. I mean, come on. That was real. That's a Tom Brady. Sorry about that. Alright, I, 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 I had to get that out. You Tom brady on me. Yeah, um, no, well, the WWE would like it if I said an Italian on it, but that's just the stupidest storyline I've ever seen. Continue. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> anyway. To sum it up, prestige for the titles, lengthy title runs, uh, redesign the WWE Championship, make it the only title, 
uh, unified or uh, undisputed. Uh, Jericho is back. You know, you can definitely work some angles in there for undisputed championship. Uh, yeah, just, you know, make the titles mean something. Uh, we, we want champions who hang on to those titles or, you know, even if they lose them to someone who doesn't necessarily fit the bill as champion at the time, make it so that when they go back for it, it's interesting. Remember Stone Cold and Kane? Yeah, prime example. Kane only had the belt for one day, but when Austin won it back, it was great. When Cena wins a title back, people are like, you know, oh, come on. So, Prestige did the titles, changed the Divas title back to the women's title, one main title, pushed the other belts, there you go. And those are our signatures. Now, get ready for our finishers. Hey, America, it's me, Dan America. America, want to know what's wrong with the wrestling world? I'll tell you. In fact, that's my finisher for this week. Because I want you to demand better gimmicks. A gimmick, America, is what a wrestler is. It's their identity. And what identities do we really have? I'm not going to get into Brodus Clay too soon. I'm going to take this piece by piece. First order of business, Alex Riley. Why did he fail? All he was was Alex Riley. Let's take another one, for example, America. But let's take a more of a success story, or a growing success story, like Justin Gabriel. Justin Gabriel's up and coming now because he doesn't really have a gimmick, but he's been in the ring enough. Heath Slater, what does he have? Or is it Keith Slater? You see how a weak gimmick can really affect your audience there, WWE? Let's move over to TNA for, exam for uh, another example. The newer guys, not show, so sure what their gimmicks are. The older guys, like Bully Ray, Sting, and Jeff Hardy... Well, their gimmicks were pre-established, so we already know who they are. We know that Bully Ray is supposed to be some kind of a redneck roughneck. We know that Jeff Hardy is supposed to be extreme. We know that Sting is supposed to be... What was Sting's gimmick? The Stinger. Sting. He went from Bart Simpson to the Crow to Guy with a Bat. Sting... It's no wonder McMahon never really reached out for ya. Vince McMahon, evil owner, great gimmick. Stone Cold Steve Austin, angry redneck drinker who has a problem with authority, great gimmick. The Rock, someone who's so full of themselves that they can't even hear themselves talk, great gimmick. Gold dust. That's all I need to say. The Undertaker. All I need to say. Why? Because those were great gimmicks. And I find it that lately in wrestling, there are no gimmicks. They're just guys that show up. And anyone who shows anything remotely close to a gimmick gets over. Then there's the exception. People like John Cena, Zack Ryder, and Brodus Clay. Gimmicks that were preconceived, that were put in front of us, that we are forced to buy into. Why? Because somebody else thought it up? Someone thought that we would like it, and they put a lot of money into it, so we better, because they're not going to stop, because it's already costing them too much. Well, if it costs that much, why don't you put a little bit more thought into it? Because we've seen the dancing re... Can't use that word, and because I want to be a good patriotic American, I'm not going to use that word, but I am going to burp. That was almost like throw up and not so much a burp, but... Back to what I was saying, I was about to use a bad word, and I completely lost my trail of thought. But what I can tell you is that 
We've seen people dance around the ring before. Rikishi, Ric Flair, Dusty Rhodes, Shawn Michaels. We don't need to see a 200 plus pounder. Look, I don't even know how much Brodus Clay weighs. Every time he comes out, I stop paying attention. I pay attention long enough to see the girls touch their butts together, and that's it. Is that what you want, WWE? You just want people to watch so they can see girls touch their butts together? I'm watching just for that. Do you want just me watching it so I can see the girls touch their butts together? I thought so. Look, girls. If you want me to stop watching, then stop touching your butts together. That's the only reason why I pay tune in when Brutus Clay's on. Hell, I tune out when John Cena's on. I tune out when Zack Ryder's on. Sometimes, you know, Santino grows on you. And if Santino was the only joke gimmick that they had going, everything would be alright. But no. They're trying to push other gimmicks that we don't want onto us. And the point of my finisher is, America, is where are the traditional good gimmicks of the past being reinvented for the future? We had a good run in the 90s. We had a good run in the early thousands of old gimmicks being reinvented. And maybe that's the problem, America. Because like I said before on the show, I am sick of seeing and hearing of how good the wrestlers of the past were. Why aren't we raising the bar that they set? WWE, TNA, and all other promotions that exist in America. Why aren't we raising the bar on those who put the bar in place for us to reach? Where is the wrestling renaissance? Where is the next evolution of professional wrestling? I don't see it. Maybe it's true what they say. When the Undertaker goes, you all go. So, maybe it's time for you guys to sit back and find a new gimmick. And that's my finisher, America. Thank you, America. I'm Dan America. America? <clears throat> Excuse me a moment. Mmm, Brady tears. Tastes like victory. Anyway, America, I know this is a wrestling show, but Eli finished it for me. That's all I really have to say. <laughs>